Oops. Welcome to the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast. You can find us at www.lifthavyrunlong.com on Twitter and Instagram at Lift Run Long. Also, feel free to email me directly at the address Wilson at lifthavyrunlong.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. If you are not a member of our private Facebook group, you should be because we want you to be there. Search for Lift Heavy Run Long community and request to join right now. We have started an LHRL premium member area on our website. Started that, I guess, officially today to some extent. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about that. We're, we're going to have a private members group. Uh, we'll have access to some, some content that nobody else will have access to. We've got some video galleries. We've got some training programs. We've got an app that you can be a part of. Uh, and we're going to have a members-only podcast, which, speaking of, I spoke with Andrew Clayton yesterday and we record a podcast and he just happens to be the strongest man in the world under 230 something pounds when the world's strongest man in 2017 wow um i realized that money is not growing on trees but i do love <laughs> lift heavy run long and i love being able to connect with people and put out content uh, but maintaining a website managing a blog hosting an app and producing a podcast can become a very expensive hobby and we've reached that point <laughs> So we are asking for the fee of $3.99 per month or $39.99 per year, no interest, up front, <laughs> to become a premium member of Lift Heavy Run Long. I also want to let you know that I do my best to censor the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast that is available to the public, as I have children and I like to listen to podcasts with them in the car. So I want to respect you and your family as well. Some things do slip past me, so the occasional bad word might slip out. I can't tell you that all of our topics are family-friendly, but uh -oh. we will do our best to keep them that way. We can't always keep Vaughn and Amanda in line. <laughs> I'm the one. I, I'm the problem child here. Did, but, you get a, did you get a review that was bad? No, no. I just thought when doing the Members Only podcast, I made it clear that there would be no censoring because oh, there's just okay. only gotcha. so much time gotcha. to, to do so much right, editing. Right. And so I, I made it clear that there's going to be some, some stuff, stuff said. So then I thought, you know what, if I'm going to put the work into censoring, I should probably let people know that it is censored. Yeah. Cause you know, you listen to podcasts, you drive around with your car and F bombs get dropped and you're like, uh, <laughs> the kids probably shouldn't hear that, but I really want to hear this podcast. So you keep it on yeah. anyway. Yeah. So how did the podcast go with? <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, it was good. awesome. I can't wait to hear it. Yep. Hopefully, I'll, I'll have it up tomorrow, but he's an interesting guy. He's a really nice guy, uh, obviously a really strong guy, and it's funny to hear the one of the strongest men in the world kind of casually brush off his accomplishments um, because he's also a – he's he competed in a 100-mile race, which he, he didn't finish, but he competes in distance running, uh -huh. finished a few marathons, half marathons, runs like has run a five something mile wow uh, and he's wow. a big old boy he can lift heavy run long <laughs> yeah he can he can do he qualifies <laughs> yeah i sure. told him he could be a run member <laughs> <laughs> i let him do that he needs super a bumper nice sticker. guy andrew clayton hope you'll y'all find out more about him later my name is wilson horrell i'm your host i'm a nobody compared to who i'm sitting in the room with and especially to my right the finest woman in the entire planet <laughs> also the most intelligent and giving and loving. She's so giving and loving that we're going to have to interrupt the podcast about a half hour through it because she got to <laughs> flip poke chops for the kids. <laughs> My loving and beautiful wife, Dr. Amanda Horrell, 
also known as Jacked and Tan. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing dynamite. You're looking good. Thank you. Are you warm? No. You're not? I'm not. My nose is running already, so I'm going to have to. I'm telling you what, y'all are the complainingest people I've ever been associated with. I just can't do right. I appreciate you turning the turbo engine on for a while. It was negative eight degrees when I got in here, and then I brought in a a torpedo heater, and that's not enough. (laughs) I'm just going to set fire to the place, and we'll sit here and watch it burn to hell. And next to her, we have... Alex Macklin. What's up? Who I bet a, a bunch of the listeners are familiar with because he's a celebrity of sorts. <laughs> and next to Alex, we have the celebrity. Talk about celebrity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bell of the ball, the Reverend Von Rawls. How What's are up, you, sir? Bill? I'm good. Good. Speaking of the premium member, the LHRL member site, your vlog is going to be up there. It is. Yep. Nice. It is. I've been super busy for the last couple of days, but like, uh, I really enjoy putting that thing in my face and talking about, <laughs> hey, and a lot of people on the Facebook group were like asking questions and stuff. And like that really fired me up because I'm like, oh yeah, I could talk about that. I could do that. Yeah. You know? And it's something that I think you'll enjoy finding a reason to find a reason to have something to talk about. You know, like with my blog, I enjoy like going through my day with some purpose because I know I need to find something to write about. So you got to create an experience. Yeah. I mean, you can't get on your blog and say, I didn't really do anything today. <laughs> yeah. My life. Yeah. Like, but I mean, I think it's, it's different now because there's like 5,000 people on this Facebook group where it's like, you can, you can say, I'm going to do my vlog today. What do you, what do you want to talk about? And like, at least somebody will say, <laughs> Hey, what'd you eat yesterday? Yeah, or some what, people, yeah, some people know, just only vlog that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, right. Right. So. There's some really bad ones out there. I mean, the competition is not real, real high. Right, so, right. I mean, just producing a vlog regularly will put you way ahead of the, the curve. It's consistency. Yeah. That what all that matters yeah. anyway is pretty much. Yeah. Yep. I mean, God only knows if we've been able to get a following doing what we've done just based on <laughs> consistency, anybody can. Yeah. But yeah. doing it every day would be a lot. Every day, every day is just too much because it gets, it gets to be this thing where I'm like, okay, I got to go and do this, but I don't know. So do you walk around with like a camera? Like? Well, so far the first two have been. He's got a camera well, crew, like for, a true Hollywood <laughs> For a while, like, so I started last year or sometime and was doing that mm-hmm. with the camera and then I just kind of fell off and now, so the first, the last two that I've done have been cameras on a tripod at my desk and talking. Okay. I'm just using my phone. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I will likely do the walking around with the thing. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Do you think that's good or bad? I, I am not a vlog expert at yeah, well, all. Well, I mean, you, are, you, <laughs> I, you, know people, you know what people like. I mean, I definitely, I definitely have seen people uh, like do some vlogs and, you know, yeah, a lot of times they just follow themselves around yeah. you know, with a camera, like in their hand or whatever. But I've never been one of those per- people that like understand why people watch vlogs, so right. I'm probably not the best person to ask. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, yeah. like, I guess it's like reality TV, you know? Like, you just cur- see, you follow somebody, you know somebody, and you're like, oh, I wonder how their life is. Their life's just like mine. Cool. Well, oddly enough, you know, I, I don't, I, I rare, very seldom do I read blogs. Very seldom do I listen to podcasts. I'm busy writing a blog and producing a podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes I ask myself, like, why would anybody right. listen to this? Why would anybody read this? I wouldn't read the stuff that I'm writing, but some people do, and I enjoy writing it. So I guess really trying to figure that out is a moot point. Right. People like, there are people out there, you just got to keep doing it long enough to find the ones that do it. And sure. oddly enough, like I talked about this uh, on one of the vlogs, is – it's weird because like four years ago or whenever I started this thing, I, w- I was literally like wanting to go find the guy that could lift 400 pounds and run a marathon or run a 50 mile race. And like, I, there was nobody. You were that guy. I, 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 was like me and like Vaughn two was looking for a friend. Could, two other people that I could find literally like I would post about it. Blah blah blah. Just go on like the CrossFit.com <laughs> yeah, like forums. Right. I would, yeah. And I'd be like, hey, anybody else got an ultra runner in there? You're yeah. like, who is this guy? <laughs> and and there was there was literally I could find like Alex Viata and one Which, other who's in the group now. Who's in the group now? <laughs> and like one other person that you know uh, could do that. And now it's like all these people are just like coming out of the woodwork where they're like. 
You're like, I love lifting weights. I love running. And here we are. You like, started a revolution. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just really cool. And I think people are also starting to understand that you don't have to do either of those two things to be part of the, the group. That it's right. not about necessarily – deadlifting 400 pounds and running 50 miles as much as it is trying to improve your life by being active and improving other people's lives by encouraging <laughs> them to be active, whether they lift 20 pounds or a thousand pounds. Yeah. I think it sends a good message too. Like, you know, being strong is, is, is awesome, but you should be able to do just about everything else too. If you're super, super strong, but you can't like walk up the stairs without getting tired, then that's a problem, right? Like, Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's good to be, well balanced if you're thinking about general overall like health and, and fitness I, I tell people all the time because a, a coach at, at our gym Paul Pinkley had had told me that you know the goal in this is to is to be awesome but you also want to be awesome for as long as you can exactly and when you turn 70 years old nobody's going to expect you to squat 400 pounds but they would appreciate it if you can get up off the toilet that's a great that's a great point so, right. you know yeah. keep yourself moving enough to keep yourself moving mm -hmm. if you can still use the squatty potty when you're 70 years old and if you can squat mm -hmm. 400 pounds that's fantastic <laughs> we want to have you on the podcast but if you can't then you'll be doing everybody a favor by moving around now introducing the man who's been on a sabbatical who we who we've all missed He's ketogenic back. Chris Perry yes, is I'm back right. behind the camera. I am back. And man, am I happy to see you. <laughs> how's you that, how's you? that uh, keto? I, know, I feel like I've been away forever. Where, you where have, have you, you been? You have been. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, are you still, you still peeing on sticks and making them turn <laughs> red? I, I, I am. I, you know, we talked about one time on one of the other podcasts about falling off the wagon. Yeah, cram that microphone in your face as close <laughs> as you can get it. I fell off the wagon and got <laughs> ran over a couple of times, <laughs> um, especially during the holidays. But I'm back on it now. You're not the only one that's fallen yeah, off that wagon. That's, that's pretty much everybody, yeah. almost, I'd say. And that's the, okay, right? That's okay, though. Yeah. 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 It, it, it gives me it, – it's a challenge now. The, the road to Weight Watchers in, is paved in, in holiday wagon jumping. <laughs> so don't beat yourself up. I even joined the um, – Biggest loser. Yay. I was going to ask yeah. you about that to yeah. see if you did. Yeah, I joined that. I'm on, I guess. At the gym, yeah. Yeah, at the Olive Branch CrossFit gym. So yeah. I'll be doing that starting next Monday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, okay. So All right. I'm right excited. Right that on. should be fun. So right now I'm eating everything that I can. <laughs> yeah. And I'm hooking. In preparation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to lose a bunch of water yeah. and everything. You, you go, go up win. there and weigh. So the more you can sandbag, the better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, I think you have everybody's a purpose. got that mentality. That's yeah. like Laura Pinkley says. She said, I've been training for this all year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 But you're I'm glad be to be great. back. I'm, I'm not in The Biggest Loser, and I really should be. I, I have put on so much weight. It's incredible. But I feel so good that I just – I'm not. I don't want to do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I sat over at at uh, Amanda's family's this weekend. They have a they have a finished basement with deep freezers down in there, and they have Grayson's Xbox is hooked up to the TV. So we must have played forty games of Nintendo of <laughs> Xbox, and in between every game, I would go get like. Four pieces of fudge, and I put down two of them, like you know, the ones that don't really count because yeah. nobody's watching. And then I'd come back in with four, and Grace was like, "God, Daddy, you've been eating a lot of fudge." I'm like, you know, just shut, shut up, up, shut your mouth, <laughs> you're grounded. I'm give your that, father. Give me that remote. Hey, I'll, eat, I'll eat what I want. Nobody tells me what to do. Santa's not coming now. <laughs> so, I mean, I just I blew it out, man. Blew it out. Yeah, I did too. We got to do. We got to do reviews. Because we got reviews because you put up a, I guess it'd be called a webinar. <laughs> I put up a video showing, put up a video to showing how to do on it. On iTunes and make a review. Yeah, yeah. that's that's I the only way that. to do it. <laughs> Man. And I have no problem with that. I am not, I am sh a shameless self-promoter. So what's the, self so, so did the reviews get larger after I posted that? We, we got a few. We got, okay. we got about four, I guess. Wow. Um, but we got two to read today, three to read today. All right, I'm going to get through them quick. One of my favorites, five stars, the conservative runner. I really wanted to leave a run. Did I already read the one about the one-star review? I don't think I did. I Amanda I said I did. <laughs> I really wanted to leave a one-star review, as I know Amanda's been wanting to read one, but that's just not possible. I've spent many hours with this group, as the podcast helps me pass the time during long runs and gym cardio. 
The conversation is fun and refreshing, and the guests are always entertaining and engaging. Often the discussion pulls me away from the daily challenges of life and helps me look at things from a different perspective. I really appreciate the time and effort of everyone that contributes to this podcast. Thank you and keep up the great work. And that is from Shana of Germantown, Wisconsin. All right. Which always throws me off because I'm, I'm not Tennessee. even going to say her last name because I'm going to butcher it. But, yeah, I always think it's Germantown, Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, I called uh, Massage Envy one time and made an appointment at Germantown, Wisconsin. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. Really? Well, you remember we made – And they called me back. I'm like, are you sure? Are you I sure? made reservations for Ruth Chris and Tupelo. Yeah. Because they're on like Ridgeway something. or You other. know what's funnier about that? My wife used to call Abner's in South Haven and, and order it, then go over there and pick it up. And three times she ordered it, and it was never ready. They ended up, every all three times, they gave her the free food, saying, you know, we're sorry we didn't, you know, we didn't have your food ready. The whole time she was calling the one in Tupelo. <laughs> well, there's, really? your, there's your loophole. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Same area. Yeah. Want yep. free food? Just yep. call the wrong store. <laughs> exactly. Yep. That's the way to do it. Here's another five-star review. Sorry, Amanda. Man. The fitness podcast for the rest of us. I've followed this podcast since the beginning when it was Vaughn experimenting and have enjoyed every show as they have grown, especially with Wilson coming on board so early and then Amanda and the rest of the crew. They really focused in on celebrating the everyday athletes. It's always inspirational to hear how the guest athletes prepare and balance real life with training and being good people in general. I really appreciate this podcast and look forward to it weekly. That's our boy James Ammon. All right. He's been good to LHRL. Yeah. Faux show. I love I love when the guys say I uh someone said the other day I, I started following Vaughn when he was at Faction. I started old, following old, old school. Like yeah, yeah, and I'm like and I've been following him ever since, you know, the lift heavy run long thing and that's like that's that's really super cool. Isn't it know? though? That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. Another five star review. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> Learn something and get inspired by Johnny Sports. I listen to each episode the moment it hits my iPhone. Every episode, I'm learning something to add to my routine. I love the community that you have created and the fact that I get programming through the app from Valerie Hunt without being in Texas. Keep up the great interviews. The stories inspire me to try to lift heavier and run longer. Nice. Nice. I know Valerie's got some fans, and she is working hard on the app for sure. The app is awesome. Alex, have you used Trainer Eyes before? No. It's pretty neat. I like what it. was it called? Trainer Eyes. Trainer Eyes. Okay. Yeah. Is it just like deliver uh, well, you, programming? Yeah, you can set up program programs okay. for, and they sign up, and then you the coach can see what everybody's doing, and they they log their workouts and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. Neat. Is yeah. it? And did you see like everybody else that's like in the community and all that kind of stuff? I to, you can chat with them if they're in their group, oh, okay. but I don't know that you can see their results or not. If you're you can the, if they have it set to that, you can or it'll say. It'll say they checked in for this workout or they did that workout. I don't think that you can go in and see what their actual stuff is. Yeah, you can as a trainer, but I don't think anybody right. in the app can go through and see anybody right. else's stuff. But well, you might be able to. What kind of uh, programming do you put on there? Valerie does the programming. It's all body weight exercises, things that you can do from home, uh, meant to you know be added in with your other workouts and, and strengthen – Muscles for for running. Very cool. And I've got a deadlift program on there where with a few people who are, you know, it's like a three month deadlift program mm -hmm. where they can use just to add on to their regular training to bring the deadlift up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So we have more specific packages that you can buy, but Valerie provides the the programming just to everybody on the on the app. And we're, we're giving the app away for free. Anybody can have the app and track their workouts, store their workouts, syncs up with MyFitnessPal. Um, but then for the, the, if you're a premium LHRL member, then you get the, the programming uh, along with it through Valerie. Nice. Uh, and it, it's a fun app. You know, the, the group is cool. It's, it's nice to see everybody in there. They only allow 200 people per group. And they said that they're going to change that. I just think it's cool that we exceeded that already. Yeah, well, that there's something fight. to be said for that. This is a really good problem to have. At first, yeah. I got this, wow. and I was like, no, damn it. Like, this can't be <laughs> happening. And then I was like, man, I was afraid that we were going to have, like, three people, and how are we going to make it look like that a bunch of people were doing, <laughs> we doing work? Have as many 200 like, people Larry checked in want. for so-and-so, so-and-so. <laughs> Bob checked in, you know, us throwing in some aliases. Uh, so, yeah, we got – we got really, really good problems. Well, we got yeah. 240 people on there. Yeah. Something like that. 
That's awesome. Yeah. I like how you guys do the reviews like on the show. It's like, it's very, it kind of shows your gratitude for all the people listening. It's awesome. That's, I, I appreciate hearing that. I like yeah. to hear that. I, I, I have a lot of gratitude for what everybody, what this community has done for me. And I think that, uh, you know, that's what we're here to do is share that more than anything else. I certainly don't have any knowledge to share. So the best thing <laughs> I can give is appreciation. Yeah. What else was there that I need to go over? I think we're going to get to to Alex Macklin and some of what he's got going on. Alex is an Olympic weightlifter, a coach, and a digital marketer. Some of y'all probably know him from the Barbell Shrugged podcast and the business of Barbell Shrugged. And now he is with Travis Mash, yep, Mash Travi Elite. Yep, Mash Elite Performance. Mm -hmm. And how are you enjoying that? I love it. Travis is awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's. I met him through uh, when I was – with Barbell Shrugged, and I met him maybe several years ago. And he was, he was actually um, one of my coaches at one point in time, one of my weightlifting coaches, that he prepared me to go to the 2015 American Open. So I competed at, at that competition, um, and uh, he, he trained me for, for that. So Was the two 2015 American Open, is that what I watched – with you and Chris Moore yep. and you preparing yep. over at your families and, and yeah. that was <laughs> oh, real yeah, that was right. really awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. I didn't know that they were gonna do that by the way. Like that that whole um that whole dinner interview thing, I didn't know that that's that's what's <laughs> actually gonna happen. Like I, I went my my mom called me and she was like, Yeah, I'll come over for dinner. Um, you know, we're just gonna have a dinner and uh then I show up to my house and then like Bledsoe C D P and Charlotte and Chris Moore in there. I'm like, What are y'all doing here? <laughs> like, so yeah, and then uh, I, I knew that they were going to film something at that point because they had the cameras and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. That's really cool. Did you grow up around here? Yep. Uh, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. So, went to school here. Uh, went to, you know, elementary, middle school, high school. Where would you go to high school? Germantown. Get out of here. Uh, you went to Germantown? Oh, no. Hey, Red Devils. What year did you, did you graduate now? 95. <laughs> okay. Did you know uh, – did you – man. My old boss, uh, I used to work at the Malco Majestic. You ever been to the Malco Majestic movie theater? Yeah, yeah. Do you know Andy Brunettes? I you, do, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. I, he used to be my boss there. No so. kidding. Oh, I mean, man. I, he's the only person I would probably know like, like around that time What frame. year did you graduate? Uh, 2004. Okay. So, you know, well, this is a good opportunity to show you. Well, I, I was, I was well, leading I that direction. I was going to come over here at Germantown High there, School. There's my – That's him right there. Number oh, seven, nice. Number 72. <laughs> and and I got a highlight film. I want to send you home with my highlight film. <laughs> that's in the package. Hey, didn't you guys? Didn't you guys win the champ, uh, state championship that year? We lost the state championship. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, well, see, we my year we won it. I was, Did you really? Oh. Well, see, I wasn't on. I wasn't oh. on the football team. But senior, cut. yeah, cut. <laughs> Wrap this up. Kick him out. Yeah. <laughs> senior senior year, at Germantown won state. So. Hell yes. yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, that's so. great. Charlie White was coach. Charlie White uh, and. Um, you know, Coach Arm Brewster. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he was. They were all. They were all coaches. Um, can't remember who. I think we played Hendersonville. Okay. Yeah. We did. We did win more games than any Germantown team has ever won in a year. We we played. We were fourteen and one. Mm. And the the reason for that is because you de generally don't play fifteen games a year. Yeah. So hopefully that <laughs> will go unbroken. And if it does get broken, then. I don't know what I'll do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the record that year, but I do know that yeah, we won. We won state because I went to that game. So yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty crazy. Did you Played. do any athletics in high school? Yeah, I ran track and cross country. So I was actually a runner at some point in time. Yeah. Um, uh, I was not very good at running. I I I definitely should have picked up a barbell very early, but there was not really anywhere you could do that in Memphis for. I mean, at least I'm to my knowledge. Um, my track coach had us strength train and lift weights, but it was a very uh, bodybuilding type uh, now, approach. Coach Frost was it? Coach still? Frost, that's really it. yeah. Coach Frost. Oh yeah, yeah. man, okay. you know, <laughs> yeah, man, we 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 gotta we gotta chat, man. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So Coach Frost, was he there when you were there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. I, I threw shot and disc for him. I he uh, he got. I had knee surgery my junior year and and just ballooned up like mm -hmm. you know i was still going to the weight room every morning just eating sausage biscuits and mm -hmm. you know giving noogies and messing with freshmen and stuff yeah. and just got fat real <laughs> fast and and he helped me get my nutrition right and i dropped like 
probably seventy something pounds. Yeah, he. I mean, he was he was definitely he definitely knew what he was doing, but it was definitely more of a bodybuilding type approach. It wasn't. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it wasn't very like a strength and conditioning. Certainly not any Olympic lifting. I mean, I think the way that we we lifted, we had to lift. It was funny. He was probably before his time. Well. <laughs> Tempo's been around a long time, like. But now it's cool to be like talk about tempo and uh-huh. eccentric work. But he would have us do tempo and eccentric work for pretty much everything. So we would have to do, you know, five second eccentrics and then five second concentrics and things like that. Um, so that's more what we did. I, I we, he didn't have us do any Olympic lifts or or things like that. Um, and I didn't really pick that up until I started CrossFit. Nobody could. There are very few people in the world that can demonstrate how to jump a hurdle in a pair of coaching pants with spandex underneath while smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, I think you know what? I never saw him. I never saw him jump any hurdles. I think he was. I over just that. mean him showing. He yeah. would have the cigarette in his hand. He'd be like showing the motion of, of how <laughs> yeah. it's done. He definitely. He definitely still smoked like when I was when I was uh, there. But yeah, I mean he's love yeah. that guy. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's an interesting dude yes, for, sure, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So you get out of high school, uh, and, and then where does it go from there? I went to college. At, I went to Vanderbilt. Um, no and kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, Commodore yeah. is nice. Yeah. We've got a um, bunch of smart people coming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, sitting over there. <laughs> Did you go to Vanderbilt? Or? No, no. It's my mom that's her favorite football team. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, that's uh, – <laughs> I know. You must be, she must be a diehard fan if Vanderbilt is her favorite team. She really you know, is. She has to be and dedicated. she admits it. Because uh, yep. they are not known for football. But for Amanda went to – you went to UT. I went to UT Chattanooga yeah. and then Union. And she's a doctor. Okay. So. <laughs> what kind of doctor are you? Pharmacist. Okay. Right on. Right on. Yep. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah, so I went to, went to Vanderbilt, um, and then I, I majored in uh, biomedical engineering. Nice. Um, and then uh, I didn't do anything, like, fitness-wise in college. I mean, that was that was pretty much my party time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I actually gained a lot of weight in college. I think I stepped into college around 150, and I left almost probably back 185. Hell um, yeah. yeah. That's what college is for. <laughs> I mean, college is there to flunk out and get fat. I, to this day, I still That's don't know how. That's why they have flunking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, after college, I went to graduate school, came back here to go to graduate school um, for biomed. Came back here at Memphis, University of yeah, Memphis? Yeah, University of Memphis. Um, they have a joint program at, at UT. Um, you know, I think I, I did it just because – I didn't really know what else I was going to do. I, you know, it's kind of crazy that they ex- like expect you when you're 18 years old to know exactly what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Um, I, when I was going through college, I, I definitely wasn't feeling what I was doing, but it was kind of one of those things where I'm just going to stick it out. Um, and then I also thought, okay, well, this is how I can have a decent life and get a job and, you know, do all that stuff. Um, so I went to graduate school and I was started working. I entered a PhD program uh in biomed and i mean i started it but i wasn't really i wasn't really feeling it too much and i had still kind of kept up with the partying and all that kind of stuff and i just got really really overweight really fat i probably pushed about 200 pounds like not a good 200 pounds um and then around 2010 that's when i stepped in uh crossfit memphis which is where vaughn which is right around the same time that i was there too. Yeah. So Actually, yeah, me and Vaughn, I mean, I know Vaughn from, yeah, back back then. Like, Vaughn was one, probably one of the first people, like, I've met at yeah. CrossFit Memphis. Uh, really? You know, yeah, we used yeah. to work out at We used to work at the same time. time. Yeah. I, I mean, I've got I've got videos. There's videos on YouTube of, like, me pulling my first 300 deadlift. Oh, he used, to, he used to kick my ass deadlift. at Wads, man. Yeah. He was – I was like, Vaughn, this dude is old dude strong, man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I was not strong at all. When I stepped in that gym, like, I couldn't – I probably – I couldn't squat like a like 165 pounds. Like I was so weak. No couldn't kidding. snatch couldn't snatch 95 pounds. Couldn't couldn't do anything. Like and I saw I kept step, stepping in this gym and all these people were like doing all stuff and like girls were like women were like lifting so much more than I could and I was like I suck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it kind of it kind of motivated me to well, it definitely did motivate me to to want to get stronger and that's that's how I started get into like weightlifting. What was your what was your turning point of like I'm gonna go to CrossFit? What made you go? Uh, well, I was intrigued by it because I had some friends that um, knew Doug, and um, I don't care about he's married now, but he was trying to he was trying to mac on one of my <laughs> one of my friends, uh, and uh, 
but and they were they were kept on talking about CrossFit. These two girls, they were cross or cross or cross or CrossFit, just like CrossFit people do now. Mm-hmm. You know, you start doing CrossFit, you want to talk about <laughs> it all the time to everybody. Um, and so I'm like, what is this CrossFit? Ha ha ha. Uh, you know, I do bodybuilding and whatever. I'm super strong. Um, and so, uh, you know, I met Doug out at a bar, uh, and then he was like, and by this time I had already kind of looked into what it was, and I was like, these dudes are crazy, and everybody's super strong. And so I decided to just take him up on his offer to come in the gym the next day and just got completely wrecked first day in there, just like everybody else pretty much does. That's awesome. And cool. uh, been doing it, been just hooked at that point. Well, Doug Did- has a lot to, to take credit for because that's true. it's the same thing that happened to me. Like I, he I was, was macking on your girlfriend. Well, <laughs> no, but I was listening to the Jason Ellis show on satellite radio and uh, he's like into MMA fighting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he like went on this rant about like, uh, I don't know. Uh, you're, he was talking to a caller on his show and he was like, you're fat and you, you got kids and like, you don't care about your kids cause you're blah, blah, blah. And he just went, you need to go get in shape. I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, I wonder what, I wonder how these MMA fighters train. You know? So I, I didn't know went, that. I didn't I know, know he like broke bad on you. Uh, uh, he wasn't talking to me. Uh, uh, he, was ta- he was talking on the show to. Vaughn was talking to a steering wheel. Uh, like, yeah, we're gonna do this today. So, so I go Google Memphis MMA training, mm-hmm. and the first thing that popped up was Doug, and I was like, "Wow, this dude's a fighter." Okay, I'm gonna go find that guy. So that's nice. You know, <laughs> so did you like Doug when you first did you go home like God I hate it that I like that guy I went up there because he's backing on my girlfriend I want to <laughs> no I wasn't my girlfriend but it was friends of mine but yeah <laughs> okay. yeah but no I I don't know I with with the first time I met Doug uh you know he's pretty quiet you know so um I step in that gym and I have no idea what he's talking about he's speaking to me in tongues because you know crossfitters use all these abbreviations mm-hmm. and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about so I just kind of roll with the flow and then we we did this this am wrapper or, or no it was a chipper or something like that and um, everybody else was done in like ten minutes and it took me like forty five minutes to do mm-hmm. um, and he kept he, during the whole time he kept saying he kept trying to hint at me like you don't have to finish it and you know you can you can go outside and puke if you if you need to <laughs> I was like no I'm cool I'm cool I don't need to puke I'll finish it um, but uh, no nah, he he was he was very courteous and very uh, professional so you know and that's that's just how he is. I remember seeing Doug on, I just started CrossFit and I was, you know, into the open, all that's happening. It's like so much fun. And I was watching a, one of their videos and Doug kept saying, if you're any good at CrossFit at all, then do this and that and that. And if you're any good at CrossFit at all that you should do. And he said that like three times and I couldn't do any of the things that he was <laughs> mm-hmm. saying. And I was like, I, man, that guy, like, I don't like that guy. <laughs> and I told Vaughn, I was like, and that Doug guy, like, if I ever see him, I'm going to hit him with a pipe. <laughs> and Vaughn was like, well, you better get a long pipe. Right. Because he'll waste you. And exactly. I was like, Doug will. And then I went on, you know, I creeped him down. And I was like, whoa, man. That yeah. That's pretty intense. Yeah. That, that that guy is, is, I guess, deceptively athletic. Like, to look at him, yeah. I mean, he's obviously fit. But he's a incredible athlete for Yeah, you you wouldn't you wouldn't look at him and know that he was very, very strong. Like he's he's very strong. Um and he's very athletic and moves really well and knows a lot about movement and things like that. So I definitely learned a lot from Doug, especially about movement, um, you know, just how to move and best practices and things like that. So and I think a lot of people have because he I mean he's made, you know, technique wads and all that kind of stuff and teaching people how to do that stuff and i think that's why you know part of the reason why you know, barbell shrug is so popular because doug is a good teacher of that mm-hmm. yeah well is that what you kind of fell in love with is the art the the movement more than anything else? no i just like lifting heavy <laughs> you're, 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 you're very graceful i mean your moves are well thank you because i don't feel that way <laughs> does, does anybody i mean does any of the 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 olympic lifters feel as if they're graceful lifters you know, I don't know. That's I've never asked that question. It's probably a good question to ask somebody. But you know, I, I, I definitely don't move that great. Um, I was not. I think. I well, think, if we did a side by side of your snatch and my snatch, then they would say one of those in is room, is really I, I good, and and one of those is not. I guarantee you, if I pulled up a video of me like 
you know, six years ago, you would probably be like, oh, my God. I, <laughs> I wish I had a video of me probably snatching for the first time because it was probably horrendous. Um, it took a long time for me to, to get to that point. Um, it took a lot of work and, and practice and just being really, really dedicated to fixing it because I, I was not graced with – amazing genetics. I'm not very strong. Um, and I don't move very well. Like I have mobility issues. Like my, my hips are tight. My ankles are very tight. Um, I have hips that don't bend at all. I think Doug actually told me like he, I have the worst hips he's ever seen in his entire life. <laughs> I need to get, I, I need to schedule a meeting with Doug and I can knock you down to number two. <laughs> pretty sure. Yeah. So like I, it's taken a lot of time to get to where I can move. Okay. And I mean, I still don't move all that great. So it's, I'm still, it's a still a constant work in progress. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, was, that's kind of how it is with weightlifting anyways. Was there a point where you, where you were going to the CrossFit classes and then was like, I'm going to go just jump into this weightlifting thing and just do that? Um, you know, I can't pinpoint exactly, but I definitely, I definitely, at some point I was, I was like, I need to get stronger. Um, and Mike Bledsoe, um, who was also the co-founder of Barbell Shrugged, uh, he was really big into weightlifting. Um, he, both Mike and Doug went to University of Memphis. They went to grad school, and they and they knew the guy named, uh, or they worked with a guy named Brian Schilling, who was uh, ex uh, exercise science in, in that department. Um, and he was really big into weightlifting. And so I think they they picked it up with him and then, you know, they started across the Memphis faction and Mike was really, really big into the lifts. So that's kind of how I got hooked up with the lifts is through Mike and Mike's Mike was actually my coach for the longest, for the longest time, stretch of time. Um, you know, he took me to my first meet and we went to the first national meet and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, he was my running coach too for yeah. several years Wow, when yeah. I first started, which is interesting. At what point did you decide to enter a Olympic lifting meet? Um, I, I was supposed to do one a year before I actually did one. Um, I got hurt. <clears throat> I had, I believe I maybe herniated a disc, my L5 S1 doing a snatch, um, because I, again, I don't move very well. And so, uh, I was probably not using the best technique and that kind of was a very eye opening experience. I don't know if you've ever like hurt your back or herniate a disc for, but it's, it sucks. Uh, couldn't like bend over, couldn't do anything. Um, and so I basically was rehabbing that for about six months. So I didn't really get to compete until 2012. Uh, but I started lifting and, and, you know, as soon as I started CrossFit, but seriously lifting in 2011. Um, but really from the first, from the first time I started really trying to improve my weightlifting, Mike was like, you should compete. Cause, and I agree, I still have that same philosophy now. Like if you, it, I mean, it really, if you, if you run or you do weightlifting or powerlifting, like doing a competition just brings something else to the table. Like you, it's, it's a very objective way to look at where you are right now. And there's really nothing else that brings that out other than a competition. How did you feel on, from an intimidation standpoint, how scary was it to do that? I mean, yeah. I mean, the first meet, I was definitely really nervous. Um, actually, we all went down there together. It was me, Doug, uh, CTP, Chris Moore. Um, they were going to film it because at that time they were starting to, you know, start up Barbell Shrugged and all this kind of stuff. They were starting the podcast. Um, and so he, CTP has this footage. But, yeah, I was definitely pretty nervous. But I'm the type of person that in on the competition, I, I – thrive off that energy. I thrive mm -hmm. off that anxiety, that, that nervousness. And it actually helps me. Um, some people, some people don't like that. Some people kind of fold under that kind of pressure, but I tend to do better with that, that pressure of the, com the competition. Did you find that your fears were unfounded? I mean, does, is it pretty welcoming of a place? Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's it's always scary to do something you've never done before. Like I didn't know the rules, and I mean as much as I should have known in. And then I think my <clears throat> my first lift I got actually red lighted. Um, 
So in weightlifting, you get three attempts at each lift, a snatch and clean and jerk. So to get red lighted means you you don't you, you fail the lift. And I had snatched it, and I'd stood up with it, but I had not. I guess you yeah the rule is you basically have to come to a standstill and you have to show control. And I guess I didn't show the control or didn't come to a standstill before I before I dropped the bar. And so I missed the lift, but I didn't understand why. So yeah, I mean it was a little bit it was a little bit frustrating, but but I mean I hit it the next time. And so you you learn like how everything is supposed to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it's that competition. It's doing the unknown. And, again, you just feed off – I just feed off that energy. Well, the reason I asked is because when I was talking to Andrew Clayton the other day – yesterday about the strongman, he was saying that some of the people competing in strongman are probably, you know, weaker than the average human. Uh, and that, you know, there's a place for them there. And that people get strongman confused with, mm-hmm. you know, that you – that you have to be the guys that you see on ESPN. Right. And it's not. It's a place to – there is that oh, element yeah. to it, of course. But, you know, it's also a place to get outside your comfort zone. And I think that, you know, CrossFit is like that. I, I want to believe that Olympic lifting is like that. I want to believe that a lot of things are like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, every every competition I've ever gone to, there's lifters of all different levels. Even at national meets, there's lifters of – all different skill levels. The kind of the one thing that kind of <clears throat> it doesn't irk me, but but people say, uh, uh, you know, I want to do a competition, but I just don't lift enough weight yet. I don't, I'm not ready for right. it. Right, right. You'll never be ready for yeah. it. Like you just you just need to do it and then see if you like it. Um, because there are other people, and people are like, well, there's going to be people there lifting more than me. Yeah, so like there's also going to be people that lift on your level. Like I've never been to a competition where I haven't seen, again, people of all levels. So. And so, where are you heading now with things? Are you have you become hooked on the Olympic lifting, and does that does that tie in with your CrossFit, or do you have to sacrifice the the CrossFit to stay with the Olympic lifting? So right now, my train. Are you asking me like what my training is right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. My, my, like right now, my training is is kind of. I'm at this point where like I've been. I've been lifting for since yeah 2010. Um, you know I've competed at multiple you know national level competitions. I mean I still weightlift, but right now like I'm I'm, I'm not old, but I'm definitely getting up there in age. Um, and I, right now I'm just at the point where I just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. So you know I'm I'm doing a lot of things that like what we were talking about earlier before the show came out. I'm going back to my roots, sort of say. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I'm doing a lot of bodybuilding type stuff. Um, I'm actually trying to get into a little bit more of powerlifting because that was something I, I haven't done. So you know I, I, I've been doing a lot of deadlifting and and bench press and you know trying to get into that. And I may I may do a powerlifting meet here pretty soon. Uh, maybe a push pull, but um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. And and I I try to do. A little bit of everything. Um, like I have a coach. He he programs for me, and his his philosophy is that. Have you always had a coach? Pretty much. Like I I don't really believe in programming for yourself. I think who was that? Dan John. If if you if you coach yourself, your coach is an idiot. Like I think that was. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that was the the quote. Uh, I paraphrase it, but yeah, I don't believe in coaching yourself because you cannot get that objective you can't get that look at yourself like you're going to you're going to cherry pick you're going to do things that you like to do um and that is going to more than anything stall you faster because you're not you're not doing things that you are weak at and those are the things that you need to bring up um sure it's good to play to your strengths but you've got to build up those weaknesses if you want to expect your strengths to get stronger um so yeah, so right now, I mean, I'm just doing a mix of everything. I'm doing a little bit of weightlifting, doing a little bit of powerlifting, doing a little bit of bodybuilding. Um, not doing so much more, so much CrossFit. Um, as I train at the Globo Gym now, but um, you know, I do some conditioning there, here and there. But it's just whatever I want to do, and and I, my goal right now is to you know, be 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 still, still be strong, uh, feel good, move well, and you know, look okay. <laughs> so yeah yeah well you have access to curl bars and that's yeah. something that there's just not enough of in the world oh for sure i was in <laughs> i went to the gym this morning and they had uh what are you looking at me like i'm crazy for curl bars yeah what do you th- curls for the girls from? how do you think you got him 
He was doing them curls. I, I was going to do the, instead of burpees this morning, the eight minutes of Tabata burpees, I was going to do curls. It Did just you? seemed easier. But they don't have a curl bar. Oh. So we need a curl bar at the gym, Vaughn. <laughs> How am I supposed to be small if I don't have a curl bar? bar. You can You're the thing that's stopping me from being a force <laughs> to be reckoned bar with. So get me a curl bar. <laughs> it's funny. A lot of people are getting in more now into into doing uh, bodybuilding type stuff. In CrossFit, you call it accessory work, but it's bodybuilding type stuff. Well, I think that you could probably do a minimal amount of accessory work mm -hmm. Uh in conjunction with CrossFit and really see a lot of gains, don't you think? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, so th I know, I, I mean, traditional CrossFit sense, that would have been frowned upon. But the thing is, is that one, it's fun. You know, sometimes it, it's it's good to get away. Ironically, sometimes CrossFit can get monotonous. Like, even though it's highly varied, it, you just get tired of doing Metcons and things like that and, you know, squatting, whatever. So it's, it breaks that monotony. And then also, too, a lot of those movements are specifically targeted towards specific muscle groups. And a lot of those muscle groups may not, they, they're weak. Like CrossFit is very, it's funny, like there's a lot of variation and you do a whole lot of stuff. But if you're a competitive CrossFit, you're, in, you're doing some very similar movements, movement patterns. Okay. So doing other things like bodybuilding and where you're forcing yourself to do different movement patterns, it's going to bring up weaknesses that are going to allow you to perform better um, in your sport. So, yeah, a lot of CrossFitters are doing a lot more accessory work. Now. Well, and there's also that I don't allow CrossFit to frown on. You hear that, like CrossFit frowns on that. And I'm like, I'm, 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 I joined a gym. Yeah. Like, I don't have people – I'm not paying people to follow me around and tell me what I can do. I mean, I'll come in and do the programming yeah. and, and, you know, do what I'm, I'm told for the most part, but like CrossFit frowning or, or like feeling like because yeah. you, you know, you have a certificate that it gives you the, the right to kind of, you know, troll around wherever you're going. It's like, <laughs> eh, you know, you got an hour a day. Yeah. That, that's it. I, I think there's definitely like a, a life cycle for that. Like, when I first started getting into CrossFit, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, constantly varied, yada, yada, yada. We're not going to do curls. Yeah, we're not. There, there, no no <laughs> bodybuilding here. That was like okay. the mantra back then. Yeah. Like, we, <laughs> we don't, don't, do, we don't do that. Curls at this <laughs> CrossFit gym. But I think, I think as time goes on, as you mature, you just start to realize that, you know, just do what you want to do. Yeah. And whatever you have fun, enjoy doing. Like, if you want to do 100 curls or whatever and then go run 20 miles, go do it. Like, it doesn't. And the end, at the end of the day, it's just about trying to be active and not sit on and ride the couch. That's it. Right. I mean, you know, if you're an, if you're a serious competitive athlete, which 99% of us are not, yeah. you know, then, okay, yeah, stick to what you got to do. But most of us are enthusiasts and hobbyists, and we just want to live better, healthier lives and look okay and look pretty good, whatever, and not that's it. Not be a complete embarrassment. Yeah, just that's not, it. I'm just trying not to be a complete and total embarrassment. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, if you do, Wilson, if you do exactly what I tell you to do, then – we are going to get you to the point where you're going to probably finish 4,000th in your age group. And if you don't, you're going to finish 50,000. Right. And it's like, you know, I just want to find a middle ground yeah. in there somewhere. I mean, really, it boils down to what can you do most consistently. You know, the reason why you know, Vaughn's the way he is or I'm the way I am or you are, you, all of you guys are the way you are is because you showed up. You just kept showing up. That's it. Like, you enjoyed it enough to just want to keep doing it as opposed to not doing it. I do love it. Yeah. I, and it ebbs and flows. Like, right now, oh, yeah. I'm, at the, I'm at the love stage. Like, I'm back in it. I've been out, and now I'm getting fat and strong. It's like, <laughs> I just can't wait to, to get there and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's times that I'm just like, I hate this stuff. Yeah. You know? And that's, and that's totally normal. Like, you, like ebbs and flows of – feeling like you are loving your training and then hating your training. Yeah. Like that is, that's how it goes. But the, at the end of the day, if, if you really truly enjoy doing it, like I, right now, like you asked me like what I'm doing, I just like training. That's it. Like I like competing, but I like training more. I love training, just going, being consistent, going to the gym, doing whatever. And then that's it. That's what I like to do. 
So, well, if you can ask somebody at any point in time, if you can ask somebody, are you enjoying your life? Are you enjoying what you're doing right now? And the answer is yes. It doesn't make any difference what direction mm -hmm. you are going because so few people are mm -hmm. like, I can, I can, I can think of times in my life. I can think of plenty of times where I've been going down the toilet, but I can think of plenty of times where I've been what appeared to be going in the right direction. Things are improving. I have goals. I have places there that I want to get to, but I'm just really so consumed with those goals that I'm just not happy with anything. And then there's been times where right now where I, I don't really have any particular goals, but I just really feel free and I'm enjoying, you know, the, I'm enjoying what it feels like to get under the squat bar. I'm enjoying that's, what a deadlift feels like. I mean, that's exactly, that's exactly it. Cause a lot of people tend to, you know, it's good to set goals. Like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a goal like oriented person when it comes to especially like training, but you can't be so hyper focused on the goal. You can't be so hyper focused on the outcome because if you completely just focus on the outcome so much, exactly, that's exactly what happens. Like you just get, you just get burnt out. Like you got to enjoy the process and the journey. That's the behavior, all that kind of stuff. That's what's, that's what's enjoying. That's what's rewarding. Yeah. The goal, you hit the goal. Let's say your goal is to hit deadlift 500 pounds. You hit, you deadlift 500 pounds. Well, what's the next thing you want to do? You want to deadlift 505. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter what the goal is. Mm -hmm. It's where, it's how you, it's this, this, the journey that you, that you take to get there. That's what you love. I read something that Alex Viata had posted and, and he's, he makes some really, he says some really poignant things and he's a really good writer and, the point that he made was his dog had finally caught its tail <laughs> and the look on his dog's face when he, you know, he got his tail and he looked at his owner, like I've got my tail. Like now what? Yeah. And then it was, okay, I did that. And now I'm just going to start chasing my tail. Again. <laughs> right. You know, what next? The yeah. dog goes back to being a dog. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you achieve your goal and there's either another goal or there's not, Yeah. but it doesn't, it's not like, okay, I got here now. I am complete. Right. You know? Right. Um, <clears throat> if you take, if, if someone was going to either go to CrossFit or go to the, the Globo gym and you said in, in two weeks or let's say two months, we're going to see where you can get the most gain as far as physical appearance. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's a lot easier to get gain just by just by muscle curls and bitch press and doing the bodybuilding stuff. I mean, again, it still boils down to which which can you show, where can you show up the most, yeah. right? Where can you keep showing up? Because you know, if you love hitting the body, if you love hitting the bodybuilding stuff, you can do that consistently, day in and day out, um, for not days and not weeks, but months and years. Then that's when you're still gonna get. That's where you're going to get the most results. Now you talk about two weeks. I mean, again, yeah, I would I say, mean yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah, both, both, both scenarios. Yeah. You're going to get results is it's consistency. That's, that's what it is. And for me, you know, when I started CrossFit, I did the bodybuilding stuff, but I maybe go twice a week, you know, but when I did CrossFit, I was like, holy crap, like this is, this is legit. Um, I, I went every day. You know, and it was fun. And it was fun because you, you wanted you to go every day. Yeah, because I wanted yeah. to go every day. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I was I I said earlier in the show, like I I had gotten up to like 200 pounds. Well, because I started going every day, um, I dropped a lot of weight very quickly. You know, I lost you know, 40, like I got down to like 170 pounds, and and it didn't take me that long to do that mm -hmm. because because I started going consistently, and then everything else bled over into other aspects of my life. So. That's really that's really the key part is if you start changing one th if you change one thing and you can do one thing consistently you just you can move to the next thing and and it just everything just works together and it bleeds over to other aspects. When you got into the bodybuilding part, did that restrict the amount of CrossFit that you were not allowed to do, but that was suggested that you do? Talk about right now, or no? When you got into when you got into Olympic weightlifting, mm -hmm. I, I said bodybuilding, I think. When you got oh, into yeah. Olympic weightlifting, did that kind of put the squash on your freedom to CrossFit when you wanted to? Or is that something that you could do hand in hand? Yeah, so when I first started, <clears throat> I first started Olympic weightlifting, I definitely did both. Um, and it wasn't until that I wanted to do 
I really, really wanted, I started competing and then I was like, all right, I want to focus on this. I really want to get better. Um, I'm just going to do this more. Um, and then it eventually came into, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. I was in grad school. So it's like, okay, I got to go to the gym and then I got to get home and do all the other stuff. So it was kind of one of those things where, where are my priorities? And that's, <clears throat> that's really where you got to look at is like, what's your, what's your, what's your focus? What's your priority? So, you know, I, I wanted to get better at, I really wanted to get a lot better at weightlifting. I only had so much time. So yeah, that's where I prioritize my time. And yeah, I got away from doing CrossFit, but you know, years later, you know, I've, I've been able to, I've been able to work it back in, but it's still one of those things where it's still a matter of priorities. Like you look at, okay, well, if you say, if your if your snatch is 200 pounds and you want to snatch 225, okay, well, uh, where do you have to do? What do you have to do to do that? And what's that going to take? And if you need to practice more and devote more of your time to weightlifting, then that's what you should do if that's your goal. But if your goal is to just you know get a faster fran time, then that's where you have to mm-hmm. you know put right, your priorities right. toward. It's just, but you can still do the weightlifting. It's just where you're spending most of your time. Yeah. Yeah. So one of them wasn't stopping you from doing the other. It was just a balance. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't, I think you can really like now, you know, I used to, I used to sing a different tune. Um, you know, I used to be like, if you want to get better at weightlifting, you need to only do weightlifting. Um, but now I definitely see sing a different tune. I, you can do it all, but you have to be willing to accept some trade-offs. Like mm-hmm. nothing is free. So if you are willing to accept that if you want to do it all, you're not going to be all that great at any one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but if you don't care about that, then that's fine. But you can't complain about that when it's like, right. that's why, my yeah, problem yeah. is the complaining part. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why am I not getting better at this? Well, if you want to get better, then spend more time there. But if you don't want to take away from something else, then you have to be willing to accept but I don't want to spend off. more time. I and that's what better. I kind of – that's uh, uh, what I thought when I tried to qualify for Boston mm-hmm. where – Okay, if I want to run a three hour fifteen marathon, I'm not gonna I'm I'm probably gonna have to spend more time there. I'm not gonna be able I'm I might lose that four hundred pound deadlift. Mm-hmm. Or I might lose that four forty deadlift. You know, there's gonna have to be a trade off if you wanna start focusing in on that. Yeah. You could totally do both things. You could run a sub four hour marathon or three thirty marathon and still lift mm-hmm. heavy weights mm-hmm. all day long, every day. But if if you want to start going to the powerlifting meet and you know deadlifting 500 pounds or whatever it is, like you're gonna have to go make a little bit of a sacrifice <laughs> mm-hmm. at some point. Right. Yeah, and it really just depends on where you are. Like you know, some people can do that. Some people can. You know, we have the elite athletes, but again, like for the most of us, that's not the case. So you're gonna have to like, trade around some things and. It's funny how at the end of the day, I've, I don't think there's ever been a time where I have, I've come up short of my goal or been frustrated with myself where I, I didn't know on some level exactly why I was short of my goal. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I, I've always known, even when I'm the angriest at myself or at my coaches or whoever I choose to take it out on, you know, I, it doesn't take a whole lot of getting still to look mm-hmm. back and say, well, the reason I'm not here is because I'm not there doing the the work, right? You know, it all boils down to doing the work. Yeah, but also too, though, you can be, you can also be happy. You can look at progress, like, oh, okay, well, maybe I didn't hit this goal, but I came really, really close. Like, a lot of people don't give themselves enough credit about when they, you know, they have this goal. You know, if I, you know, let's say I want to snatch three hundred pounds. Oh, I didn't snatch three hundred pounds, but maybe I added like ten kilos to my total, like, t- or ten kilos to my snatch, and I came really, really close. Like, that's still progress. You know, it, it's going to take, it may take longer because you're choosing to do other things or that's just the way it works. So again, like focusing too much on the actual outcome, you cannot control that. You, you don't have any control over that, but you do have control over what you do and, you know, how you choose to show up and continue working towards it. Right. Yeah. 
I always just fall back on the fact that I have a good looking wife. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't really make any difference. When you have a good looking wife. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, like, are you happy? Like, are you yeah, are you enjoying sure. what you're doing? Yeah, so like, I got it good. Know? Like, is is my is my deadlift really that important? Right. You know, when I look around at everything that I have going on, like when I go to the movie theater with my family, does the person taking my ticket ask me how much I deadlift? <laughs> You know, when hey, I sometimes they might. <laughs> yeah. I've been places and they were like, oh, yeah. How many, yeah. Well, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, rec- they, they recognize me. it from the show and be like, oh, yeah, cool, man. Well, like, what's your, like, <laughs> like, what's, your snatch? <laughs> what's your snatch now? So sometimes you got to be, you got to be ready for uh, it. Well, I'm not Alex Macklin. No, <laughs> I get questions like, you want extra butter or butter on your popcorn? Would you like to supersize that? <laughs> That's right. Which is a dumb question. They should know Actually, that. Actually, they already know. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got what does your future look like what are your goals now do you have any um right now again like well main thing i just you know i want to keep training and be healthy uh you know i'm again i'm not i'm not that old but i'm definitely getting up there in terms of like training age and then you know whatever i guess biological age but yeah. you know i'm definitely starting to feel more of the effects of training so just trying to stay healthy and so i can keep doing what i'm doing um, if age is a problem i know a guy richard we- westbrook you should oh, talk to him he's, <laughs> I know. he's like i don't know how old he is but he looks about 20 yeah he's 60 63 i think 63 so, yeah so, or sorry. no six, no he's 65 now incredible 65. yeah go ahead now nah, so but you know just trying to stay healthy um and that like i said like i just I enjoy training just to train at, at this point. Like I, I still want to, I still want to compete. You know, maybe I'll do some, I think masters for weightlifting is 35, which is, you know, pretty close it's a couple of three years for me. So, you know, I'll still want to compete, but I want to do it in a way where I can keep doing this for years and years and years and not try to break myself, you know, in, in this time. Cause I mean, that's really, we were talking about this earlier is like, you know, if you're 70 pounds and, you know, it, or I'm sorry, not 70 pounds, 70 years old, like no one's, you're probably not going to be able to squat 400. No one's going to really also going to care if you squat 400. It's more like, you know, can you get around? Can you play with your grandkids? Can you do all this other stuff? Like that's really, that's really kind of what I'm thinking in terms of long term, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, if people want to find you, you, you do personal training. I do some, I do some uh, nutrition coaching. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I mostly work f- work with uh travis mass and all that kind of stuff so yeah you can find me i i co-host sometimes with uh him and and lauren uh the barbell life podcast um so you can look that up and where do you find travis Ma- travis uh Mash? at mashelite.com and then me i'm mostly on instagram so that's where you can find me uh at alex q macklin just my name that's mostly where i'm at so Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, I told you we wouldn't keep you more than an hour. And hey, man, if you want to keep talking, it's all good. I mean, this is, all, this is cool, man. That. Enjoying he, it. He, he's a natural, actually. Oh, yeah. it, it's nice I have some experience. Yeah. A little bit of, just a little, just a little <laughs> bit of experience. <laughs> Pro in the room. Just a little bit. You know, I was on the first episode, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to come out here. Yeah, and this is fun. Us. I'm sorry about your, your car. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> Run into the neighbor's pole. Yeah, no, shh, sh- about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll bleep that come, look at, come looking for me. I don't, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, let's keep in touch, man. Yeah. Uh, come back on the show sometime, anytime. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Nice meeting you. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Thanks, yeah. Alex. This is I a really lot of fun. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. LHRL number 79 is in the books. Boom. Oh.